Well, good evening, everyone. How you doing? I'm Lee Love, and I am your host this evening for Photo Mentor TV, which we do this if you're a new new just joining us for the first time. We do this every Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, love to have you join us live, answer questions about all things photography related. Uh, if you're not here live and you're just watching on uh, our YouTube or Facebook channel, welcome anyway. You can also, by the way, send questions to help at Photo Mentor TV, and I'll reply directly or we'll use them on the show for the next uh, episode. Anyway, again, if this is your first time here, the reason for this uh, broadcast is really to help educate, encourage, and mentor new photographers primarily, but of course we help anybody. No, no, uh, don't care about that. But, um, you know, just so much misinformation out there that the purpose of this show is really to kind of help take care of uh, some of those myths and give you real straight, real world information. I am very excited about tonight's show. Um, it's very different than we anything we've done in the past. We've done this. We've I've, something I've wanted to do for over a year, and uh, that is have some what I call guest instructors join us, which have expertise in different areas to help um, bring you guys up to speed, give you some information, maybe another perspective on some things then regarding photography and art. And tonight, I am thrilled to have. Uh, my friend and art therapist and photographer uh, James Tornzano on. So we're going to have him on in a few minutes, and we're going to ask him some questions. James has had a very interesting career, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy what he has to say. So feel free to uh, get those questions fired up. Leave them in the chat there, either on YouTube Excuse me, YouTube TV or on facebook.photomentor.tv and we'd love to, I know James would love to uh, be able to answer any questions about technique or about art in uh, in general. Um, let's see if you like what we're doing here tonight I would really appreciate if you would share uh, like spindle mutilate whatever you guys do to uh, share this information with other photographers I mean again we're all here to help our friends and other fellow photographers. So uh, if you would uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, that'd be great. I'd appreciate that. Or like the page or share the videos with somebody else you think that might benefit from it. So, okay, um, if you are such a, something I should mention to you that if you are um, looking to improve your photography on the first Friday of every month, um, we do um, photo reviews for um, your work and it's the whole purpose of course is to improve your photography it's not uh, likes or thumbs up kind of a thing it's done in a professional feedback manner using uh, composition technical merit and also story to um, judge those images and so it's really a good way to get uh, improvement and uh, if honest to goodness feedback on your work and where you can improve on learn on what's working and what's not working. It's not whether I like it or not. It's really about how it's working artistically and technically. Um, any camera, any experience is welcome. Even if it's an iPhone, that's fine, no problem. That doesn't um, negate somebody from being artistic. So if you'd like to submit your photos, please go to review.photomentor.tv and submit your image. Or images and we'd love to have that again that we do that on the first uh, Friday of the month again if you are interested in if you're a social media person and you want to follow us on Facebook Instagram YouTube or Twitter that'd be great we will definitely um, follow you back no problem there and of course we have a uh, a private f uh, Facebook group if you're interested in joining it's a little smaller group. We do a little more one-on-one uh, -on -one training and information there, a little different than what I think you'll find in other groups. And you can find that by going to photomentor.tv slash join. A couple of quick questions there, and uh, then we will um, bring you into the group. Okay, let's see. What else? Um, so let me tell you a little bit about this uh, Yahoo I've got going on here, James Tornzano, who 
um, by mistake agreed to do this, you know. Uh, James and I, uh, I met James about seven, maybe eight years ago. It's probably longer than that, you know. Memory's not too good. Um, and this was before James, right? I think right before James had been diagnosed with throat cancer. So uh, we kind of hit it off right away. And uh, the fact, of course, that he couldn't talk very because of the treatment probably made him a great listener. Although he doesn't, I don't know if he'd admit that or not. But anyway, so uh, he and I hit it off real well because we complement each other um, in a number of ways. Um, we're two people that probably have more gear combined than any one person should ever. You don't need all the gear we have, believe me. And I think both of us will admit it. And we are, so James would buy lights and so I'd buy audio. And then he'd buy a camera and I'd buy a camera. And we buy lenses that match. And so between the two of us, we could probably do a full length motion picture. Uh, but the great thing is we've been worked on a number of projects together, both photographically and also um, um, video wise and just had a great time and so we enjoy working together so when I thought about having my very first guest on as an instructor James is the first one I went to because I just knew he'd be willing to do it and I know he also has a lot to contribute and something that you guys will really I think uh, take into a little different direction um, real quick, you know, one of my pet peeves is you go on these Facebook groups and all they talk about are lenses and cameras and ISOs and noise and shutter speed. Nobody talks about the art. And James brings that artistic aspect from it as someone that was an art therapist for 31 years, a very different perspective on photography. So I think you're going to enjoy this a lot. So before that, let me let you um, let's um, let you give you kind of an intro to James before I bring him on. I mean, when you're questioning me, like making me think, it's like, you know, I was on a train track. You know, everyone takes the same road and develops a rut in the road, and it's safe. But all of a sudden, somebody gets off the road. There's lots of bushes, and you don't know where to go, and they carve their own path. I thought I was going to be a doctor. I went to Georgetown, I was going to be a doctor. I mean, that was supposed to be, that was what my dad wanted. Did I think I was going to love being a doctor? No. I was number one in my high school. That was the train track. The train track was to, you know, go to Georgetown, be a doctor. And then all of a sudden, I got off the train track. And life changed. Sometimes I think I take photos just to, uh, to stop the world. The photos are... Um, almost a spiritual process, like a journey, like little guideposts. The whole idea is for me is that I take photos for people because they need them. And for me, I'm not sure if I need them, but maybe the times that I take photos to do something spiritually for myself are, they're kind of like almost as if nothing else matters in the world, but that process of taking the photo. The point of taking pictures for myself, probably to go deeper into my journey, into my work, into who I am as a person, just to deepen the journey. I mean, it brings me joy. What is the journey? I think the journey for me is about discovering who I am in this moment. You know, who am I? That's the, that's the journey for discovery of me. Do you know who you are? Yeah. So, as you can tell, James is a very reflective person, um, not like some of us Luddites over here who are not as self-aware as he, as, as he is. <laughs> I'm watching him here. He'll be on. And, uh, but anyway, so he is very self-reflective. And I also want to thank uh, Austin. I think Austin did that video for James. And Austin's a, a very creative young man as well. And uh, somebody that uh, is very creative. It's kind of, he, he's a little scary he's how creative he is, uh, I believe. But uh, anyway, um, so let me, uh, let me introduce you to uh, my buddy James. And uh, where are you, James? Here you are. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. All right, let me, let me hide behind the camera here. All right, <laughs> my first camera. This is, uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, 
as uh, Lee said, uh, I'm an art therapist, a photographer, uh, what else, a fun kind of guy maybe. Um, and um, I just want to share a little bit about the journey. So, so you were, um, let's just start by saying that um, as art, I mean, you really, you embrace the whole art perspective and and what that means and and again you know i was we were talking about earlier there's a a quote by um tolstoy who says that the activity of art is based on the capacity of people to infect others with their own emotions or to be infected by the emotions of others strong emotions weak emotions important emotions or irrelevant emotions good emotions or bad emotions if they contaminate the reader the spectator or the listener it attains the function of art and of course as we as we talk about this and it's not my audience knows that i'm really big on talking about this whole left brain right brain thing and that the the issue of art is really a lot it's got to be a combination of both but the left brain is what handles the analytical it's what handles the planning the you know aperture the shutter speed the iso calculations but what happens on the right side of your brain is the is really what we're talking about tonight and that's really the emotion the uh creativity the music the aspect and that seems to be in my opinion one of the areas where I think you probably, you know, at least like most of us strive to live most of the, most of the time, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I went, like I said, in the, in the, in the video is that I went to Georgetown and, you know, I, I was, you know, in a kind of a rut. And, um, after my second year, I took a year off and went overseas for a year. I took this little camera. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is a Voigtlander, 1975. As Lee was talking about gear, um, this was my first camera. It, of course, all film. Um, it was a blast. I mean, it really, it changed my life. I started shooting photos. I, I started moving into the art. I, I lived on the beaches in Greece. I traveled through Europe, through the Middle East, and um all of a sudden emotion feeling people all of a sudden they became important amazingly and i was documenting with this little voigtlander um and then when i got back for my junior year after a year traveling i started taking art therapy classes and eventually got my master's in art therapy and uh, art therapy is the use of art as a tool to understand the dynamics of people, you know, what's going on for people. Um, the art becomes a bridge, a, a bridge to understand. And, you know, at that time, so can, uh, give me an, can you yeah. give me a, an example? Like give me an example of a, of a, of a pain or a drawing or a photograph or something sure. that maybe somebody you've worked with is drawn and that we could look at and how you interpret that. Um, can't look at it. We, I don't have one here, but we can certainly, the whole concept was that drawing, painting, or sculpture at the time was um, the tools that an art therapist would use. For instance, I, I worked in a jail for five years, and so often I would have the kids draw bridges, and many of the bridges were on fire. They were in water, going, <laughs> they'd start in water and end in water. They weren't going anywhere. And so the art for them was a medicine. And then what happened is I started thinking how to use the camera as a drawing tool. So I got my master's in art therapy and then started moving into the concept of photography and using photography as a, um, as a tool, so to speak, as an extension of me. Um, I, I imagine the, photograph the uh, ph photography was a lot easier to get people involved in than it would be for drawing or anything like that because you don't really have to you, number one they can take the pictures on their own time and have right. them right and you can interpret them later on it's not like you have to be in the class with them yeah it's a little i mean how to photo photo therapy is not per se art therapy okay. however using the camera um as a tool is is a way of expressing oneself what what kinds of pictures are you taking what's it do for you um 
my first drawing class at Georgetown, I don't draw very well pencil wise, you know, I, I hadn't studied the drawing on the what right side of the brain yet where, you know, the, go upside down and draw so that you turn off that left brain. Um, more so, um, I had a phenomenal drawing instructor that allowed me to use my camera to draw. I mean, this guy was wonderful, wonderful teacher. So in our drawing class, when we had models, I would have my camera there and I'd be up real close, you know, to the models and I'd be taking pictures of just lines and forms. And um, that's what really started my process in the arts. We, you know, I never realized that, uh, that you and I have a somewhat of a similar background because I also loved art class, but was not very good at it. And so right. photography was a way for me to still be able to create without being able to draw or paint. So I, I had no idea that that was something that you also, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. That was, um, yeah, I'm not a very good drawer. However, I feel like I can create. You know, I, I like, I love to create. Um, so um, just about a little bit about art therapy, how it kind of relates to um, photography or how I saw it relating to photography. The most important part of art therapy is the process. Once you, if you're working with somebody like a group of people or on an individual, what you're trying to do is to set up a space for them to just immerse themselves in the process. And then out of the process, the product happens. Process, 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 and then the product. And in terms of photography for me, what, what I feel like that suggests is that you, you just don't worry too much of all. You have to learn the technique. I know that uh, Lee's been talking about, um, you know, seeing, learning how to see, learning how to tell a story, you know, and then, you know, it, exposing and process all of this stuff comes to making an image and probably the key is that how do you tell a story how do you see what do you look for well you know it used to be a lot more difficult when we were shooting film you had to start with mm -hmm. that stuff i mean you couldn't right. you know you get a, you get a roll of film back and it'd be black right well that didn't right. so you have to have a little bit of understanding about the exposure trying right. but nowadays these cameras do so much you can start yeah. at least by you letting the camera do some of the work for you and then allowing you to focus on the artistic side or the scene and the right. telling side. So. All right, so. Um, so, so, art, so art therapy yeah. then, um, what did it teach you about your own work? Did you, were you able to, to draw anything out of that? And, Cause you know, it's like see one, do one, teach one. So by teaching um, it, it, it kind of helps you, I think, what would imagine would you'd kind of do some of your own self-reflection? I think probably my master's work and the years that followed, that, and I'm still working on it. I mean, I've been shooting for what, 48 years. Um, it's about letting go, I guess, for me. You know, how do you let go? You know, not worry so much, but let go. And that's that. Because once you start letting go, the essence of the work comes through you. I, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes it just, perfect sense. Yeah. I, I describe my term as I call it getting out of my own way. Because uh -huh. if I get, I'm, yeah. I'm like so busy looking at the camera, messing with all of them. I'm like, I'll, I'll miss an amazing opportunity in front of me because yeah. I'm so busy dealing with whatever. Instead of, like you say, letting yeah. go and just being in the moment and looking and watching and observing. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked hard at, you know, uh, you know, with these digital cameras, you can, you take a picture and then you check to make sure it's there, you know, like it's yeah. okay. You know, of course it's okay, right. you know, and, and so I've, I'm working hard um, at just, again, letting go. And this is, I don't know. I have a roll of gaffer or, tape uh, that'll solve that problem for you. <laughs> yeah, like, no, don't look. You can just, put it right yeah, over the back over of the, the camera. camera, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think that's where the art therapy has really helped me is um, the whole essence of uh, of trusting, trusting that it's going to work out and that, you know, if you're in it, the images will come through, you know, and I know that doesn't, it's kind of a funny thing, but it's as if, if you were looking from the outside at something, then you're just, you're just taking a picture. If that makes sense, like I'm looking on the outside, but if I'm in the in the 
the flow of everything, then I'm making a picture. And I, and I know me and you have talked about this, taking versus making, creating a picture. Um, and so, you know, I, I work hard at that. Well, I, I think really again, hard. if we look at, go back to the same thing, it's about turning, forcing yourself to turn off that left hemisphere because that yes. gets in the way and it caught, oh, I can't take this picture. Oh, this is not gonna come out. Oh, what's this, oh, this is too, oh, I can't stand here. Well, I might get in trouble, blah, blah, blah. But it's the right side of the hemisphere that actually is where the creativity comes in and where you're like, your, your inhibitions go away. And that's where I think, our, at least for me, my best work comes from. Yeah. For sure, when you let go, yeah, and you exactly. know, like you said, get out of your way. <laughs> it's it's a hard thing to do. I, granted, because we're taught and we're in, we're in that world thing. You have to do that to be survive, of course. Yeah. Um, but still, anyway, I. Not not to not to do away with learning the technique. Like no. you said, I know that that could be for another class. But I mean, I study two or three hours a week easily. I mean, I'm constantly trying to learn. Um, refine you never everything. stop. That's why I love about photography. No. You're, you no. never master yeah. everything. It's always something right. to learn about. And, and of course, that's not even con considering the technology changes a little bit as well. You know, it's a different, different things. Right. Coming. So along that same lines, though, you're talking about spending all this much time. You're also you do a lot of commercial work for other people. A lot of time, <laughs> you know, when you're not doing your own personal photography. So oh, what kind of true. stuff do you typically shoot for other for client what kind of client work do you do so i guess i've I, I, not i guess i've been retired 11 years and in the past probably five years i've really um just worked so hard at um real estate photography i've been doing a lot of real estate for a custom home builder creighton enterprises this is an image on the screen of a house i take most of their work probably for the, for the past five years uh, they are probably the premier builder in Northern Virginia. Every home is custom. And, you know, I try to have my work reflect some of the care that I'm um, not some of the, the utmost care that goes into their product. And, um, and, and their stuff is very, I mean, it's high end, right? So they're going to, you, you want to reflect end. that capability. It's not just going in yeah. and shooting a small home. Exactly. You know? For, for instance, this shot, I waited for this light. I mean, I truly was there and, you know, this is a beautiful big house and that, in the sky, it almost amplifies the power and the magnitude of this house. I mean, I, I love this image. It's one of my favorite outdoor images that I've taken for them in the past four or five years. Huh. Um, the next image, um, it's just a different, this is a different feel. This is a, a, a expansive living room. And I wanted to um, convey the essence of expansion and, and how and I actually climbed on a ladder for this image and, and took it down a little bit. Now this is interesting because this this room ha would I would think a, a new photographer would walk in and just be like oh my gosh look at all these windows what am I going to do how do I deal with these windows and that's kind of I would see the bane of the existence when people think you would do HDR <laughs> or something so how would you yeah, go no. about photographing a room like this with so much light coming from outside? So in, in terms of getting into a little bit of the technique, I use flash, off-camera flash. This is, I think this was done with three off-camera flashes um, bounced off white walls that were sort of what were behind the ladder to create kind of a soft light. And what I usually do is, um, if this is making sense to those that are watching, is I expose for the outside. So in other words, I don't want my windows be, um, to be all white. And so if I expose for the outside and then I illuminate the inside with flash, um, you, you get this kind of a, um, just a very crisp dynamic shot. Um, well, so this, it's, uh, so in a technical term, you're talking about lighting ratios, right? You have a lighting yeah. ratio. The camera can only record so much right. white and so much dark in one scene, right. the latitude of the, uh, of the sensor. And so this is, ex I, I see this mistake happen over and over again where people will sh photograph a family in a field. I don't know what it is about fields, but it seems like everybody's got to take a picture in an empty field. I don't get it. That's just me. And the, the sky's all washed out. 
and they're like, how can I fix this? And the standard answer is, oh, shoot and raw, and then you can, well, you can't, that's not going to fix yeah. it. So, so what you're saying here is exactly the way you, the, the way you solve the problem is the correct way. You expose for the brightest that you don't have any control over, which is the outdoor. Right. And then you bring up the exposure on the inside to compensate or to bring that exposure ratio closer to a one to one. So, and it makes perfect sense that that's, uh, that you do. Exactly. Exactly. And it looks it's so, not easy. It's beautiful. <laughs> and, and the other yeah. thing I'd say about your work is it also doesn't look lit. That's the other yeah. thing. It looks very natural by using a one to one lighting ratio where it's just a perfect yeah. mixture of what's going of the outside and the inside. Thank you. Yeah. And then the next image is a little different. This was a kitchen I did. Um, in this, I, I lit a little, I, I lit with off camera flash. Um, but I, I wanted it to be a little bit warmer. So um, I wanted this, the viewer um, who's looking at these images to be able to walk into the picture and feel some of the warmth in this image. Um, again, this is off camera flashes. There's a flash way in the back by the, um, the farthest part of this picture on the right oh, side. Oh yeah, I can I see it in that little area there. It looks uh, like yeah. A, yeah. I illuminated that room without off camera flashes like this. You just can't get this um, sense of invitation. I don't feel um, so. Now, these are pretty large homes. How long does it usually take you to photograph one home? Um, <laughs> yeah, a good two hours easily. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've tried to, I don't usually like to rush anything I do. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love, love just some, most of the time I'm in there alone. Um, and it's all just looking for the right angle or the right um, height for the camera. I was wondering about Sometimes that. I was going to ask yeah. you about this, looking at this, the composition and the way you framed it and the angle. It's not, it's not, you don't just do it from your point of view, do you? Like you said in the, no, in the, in is, the first and the second one, you kind of stood, you were on a ladder to give that yeah, exactly. perspective. Yeah. This is up about eight, seven, eight feet looking down. So you can see the, in the foreground, you feel like you can see the, um, the, the, the curvature of the spindle there. And it, it just has a feeling of looking into something for me, this, this perspective. So, wow. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I, and I've done some other stuff too. You know, I've been, the real estate is uh, wonderful for me. Um, you know, I do corporate headshots. I, I do um, personal work. Mm. I, I do um, some weddings, some proms. Um, like I said, I keep trying to refine my craft. So you're not afraid to take on different kinds of work then is what you're saying. Oh, uh, no, no. Yeah. And, and I think the difference is it's not, and I tell people, there's nothing wrong with taking on any work you want. It's, um, the, the issue is really, um, whether you put it on your website or not. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with shooting whatever you want, taking that, learning from it, taking that money, put it in, in your pocket. Um, but you don't have to display everything because then people see, you know, let's say you're experimenting with doing food photography, but you're not good at it or, you know, that's not really what you love doing. Yes, you could shoot it, but there's no reason you don't want to put it on your website because then what happens, people call you up to start shooting food. Right, right. <laughs> right. You don't have to market it. Exactly right. Exactly right. You don't have to market it. Yeah. Um, um, so the so the, you also have some other photos here that, of, that you had shot one more um and that is oh, the, this one is here. that the uh, train no this is one oh, of your mom uh, yeah this is my mom and daughter this uh for me is such an emotional shot I, I think that um when we talk about for me i guess when i teach photography or when i talk about it is you know this wasn't set up of course this was just a quick shot i had my camera we were all together and my daughter was uh, washing my mom's hair and she wasn't feeling well. And um, it, again, for, it's just so much emotion. I mean, there's a lot of grain in this picture. I mean, there, I mean, technically maybe it's not the best, like we talked about, and yet there's something very uh, emotional, something very, f uh, well, something very beautiful. It goes back to that Tolstoy comment again yeah you, you emotion, invoke right? emotion from somebody and that's what i mean how many times have we had clients pick photos out of our the selects that are not the ones that we would have picked nowhere near <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're like grain eater whatever and they're like oh i right. love this picture and you're like 
to yourself, really? Because we look, because yeah, we're right. looking at it technically, but they don't care about yeah. that. No, but I have never had a can. I've never had a client tell me, "Oh, this is too grainy of a picture." It's either yeah. works or right. it doesn't right. work. Yeah, and, and no, technically, you know, there are some nice compositional areas in this. There's a lot of triangles, and those are. I don't know if you've had some classes where you've taught that, but there are you know, my daughter looking at my mom and then her arm goes over and then that forms a triangle. And then there's another triangle with my dad holding my mom's hand. Oh, that's They're right, just yeah. very, very strong. And triangles are very strong elements in a photograph. Anytime you can see a triangle, and, and I was not looking, of course, for the triangles, but I think some of the power of this image is because of the strong, strong elements in it. I think it's just a tremendous example of storytelling, and I just yeah. Uh, and you know, and what's interesting is, you may not say it's perfect, but there's the lighting actually f falls exactly right. So if, in my yeah. opinion, if the lighting on your mom's face would have been too dark, or your daughter's yeah. face too dark on yeah. the on the one side on their left side it really wouldn't have worked it had been kind of a, a, a profile but there's yep. just enough light there to reveal that emotion and to see that so yeah yeah that natural light's pretty strong we have a yeah our yeah. friend sharon uses natural light a yeah. lot she is a, a master at that oh so. yeah she is well lighting is lighting and that's the thing people don't they're saying yeah. oh i'm a natural light photographer well when they people say that i have to laugh because to me that means they don't understand how to use flash but it doesn't exactly. mean that you you can't control natural light in fact the idea is to mimic natural light using flash if you want i mean Mm -hmm. You you know your 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 real estate right. images are exact a good example of where it looks natural even though it wasn't so there's nothing wrong with it right. it doesn't have to doesn't have yeah. to look quote unquote lit or lighted so you have another picture here of um, a gentleman um, and oh, this, is this the craft oh yeah yeah this is you know this these was, are my kind of characters you know me i'm always looking for interesting <laughs> people to put yeah. my roller derby women and things like that you would love you would have loved him yeah. it, this is i i was at a uh i was at a fair up in massachusetts and i had my camera with me and you know i just um he again talk about a story look at i mean if you really you could hang out in this image for so long oh yeah um this is all of his, the t tools of his trade. And if you can look in the upper right, it's almost like he's looking at this little guy inside this little green box. Oh, yeah. Um, that is like a whole nother world right there. And so does he do leather work? Is that what kind of stuff he does? I, I think wood. He was doing oh, wood. Okay. Yeah, doing woodwork. Um, you, you know, it's interesting. If you examine, there's, like you said, look at the tips of his toes, of his shoes. <laughs> and, they're, and how yeah, they're worn and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Um, i mean just little things like that tell you so much about this picture and I, you know when i see people like this these are kind of people like oh man i'd love to do not just photos but also an audio recording with him talking about his work and about him yeah some of the fun parts about this picture are the empty chairs there's a to oh, yeah. to his to his right is an empty chair for the viewer to sit down and talk to him. Huh. And to the right of the little man, the white in the white coat, there's an empty chair also. I see that. And I think in photography, I think if you can find sometimes places for the viewer to rest in the image, it, in, it in, can enhance the image and, you know, it's like, how do you invite a viewer into your image? And I think these empty chairs, are subconsciously inviting the viewer in. Ah, oh, I think I'll just sit down and hang out. <laughs> um, just like that little guy with the white coat, <laughs> kind of crazy thought. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, me and you, I, I, I just think, oh, I'm, I can't imagine what he's thinking. You know, that like that little elf beard and, um, you know, it, it, and then the next picture um, was from the same day. I love this too. Um, really great, this guy was wonderful. great use of light in this one right here fantastic thank you again this was natural light um love love this image um you know but there was enough welder, light coming I mean, from the overhead light obviously on his arms to give it yes. some depth yeah yeah this was again uh 
just a, a fixed 35 millimeter. Just love the picture, love the feeling, the essence. Again, it's just telling a story about his life. I feel like he's hammering away, the fire's going, you know, all the tools are there, similar to the last picture. You know, the tools of the trade. Yeah. Um, so they're fun. I mean, I, yeah. these are these are some of my fun pictures. I uh, and I now this one. Okay, this next one you know you know is my favorite photo. I know this is my favorite <laughs> photo that you've ever taken, and I don't know why I say that. I just know, when I saw it, I was just taken by it. And for yeah. me, what I read in this one, number one, the composition is excellent. The way the train tracks are, the fact that now this is all this is Austin, right? Yeah, this and is this, awesome. this, this, is, the, this yeah. is the guy that shot that did the video. Yes. Yeah, so, and he's got this coat on. He's looking. He's waiting. He's and 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 to me, the leaning alone. If he wouldn't have been leaning, it wouldn't have been as interesting of a photo. <laughs> yeah. But the, right. Just that little bit of leaning helps yeah. add that anticipation. Something yes. so subtle makes a big difference, in my opinion. Yeah. Isn't it almost that concept of leaning into your work also? Yeah. Yes. That, you know, when we're lean in, like, I think there was a, a quote from somebody, if your photography is not that good, you're not that close. Yes. You I know, think like it's lean, Robert lean Capra or somebody said that. Yeah. Somebody like that. Yeah. It's like, get in there and get in it. Don't be afraid. You know, yeah. don't be afraid. Um, Oops, sorry, so we moved into time already. Wow. Yeah, sorry, no, that was, that was me. I, wrong That's button. What, it's actually, no, 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 no. It's actually, I think it was 925, which is about the right time. <laughs> oh, so, okay. No, All right. So <laughs> we can talk about that. So, um, no, 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 that's okay. We so, can get to something. So else. there, there was, a, so uh, when we first met again, I was, I inter did this in the introduction that you had been diagnosed with throat cancer. And so, um, I don't even want to pretend to understand what that's like. Um, but why don't you take us a little bit through the journey, just briefly on the physical and the emotional. I mean, you were taking pictures, you showed me photos <laughs> of them doing the therapy. I mean, oh, I remember, yeah. the, right. Radiation. You had your camera set up <laughs> while they're doing yeah. this thing. And so right, even then you were, you were still using photography. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the whole process and then we'll get into some of the photos and some of the, the concepts that you brought out in those. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, um, that's funny. Uh, the radio, I had radiation for what, I don't know, 35 every day for 35 days, um, diagnosed with, uh, throat tongue cancer never smoked. Um, it was a shock. I mean, it was truly, it was two, I think it was Christmas Eve, maybe 2014. Um, I don't know, Christmas, it was in December. I might not have been Christmas Eve, but it felt like for some reason that feels like anyways, um, never felt like I was a, a victim. I, I, um, you know, I approached it both from a Western and an Eastern traditional. I used acupuncture, Reiki, um, I worked with a healer for a while. And of course I did the Western, um, radiation, which I was bolted to a table and they would shoot these beams through my cheeks <laughs> at the cancer. Uh, it was crazy. In fact, um, I have a video and I think Lee was referring to a video up on my website, um, that Lee will put up later on at the end of the show where you can go, it's called the personal tab. And there is my, it says my journey with cancer or something in it. They had this multi, I don't know, billion dollar machine that would revolve around me. And I was bolted to the table. And I told them that I really wanted to see what was happening. So I asked them that I could I take my camera there and film what was happening to me because and they said no at first, but I said, I, I pleaded with them. I said, you've got to let me. I was like, I want to visualize what's happening to me. You know, I'm a visual person. And so I filmed it. Hmm. Um, and I, I must have been my, the first image of what we'll go to in a few minutes is um, I, I must have felt something because I started, I, I took this image, what was, must have been three or four months before I was diagnosed Um and I had never, yeah, this is the image up on the screen now. I had never taken image. I don't think I'd ever taken images like this. This is not my style. Um, it felt kind of dark. Um, I, in fact, I even entitled it The Wasteland. And 
It uh, and it's about a, how long ago was camera. it before you were diagnosed? This about three months, three oh, or four okay. months, and it, it felt like I must have had the cancer in me. You know, I it must this. It's almost like reflective, like the art came out of me. And um, this is all done in camera. This is a um, a technique of this is about a two. I think this is a minute and a half exposure. Uh, my camera's on a tripod. I would I. I I run into the picture for 10 or 15 seconds and then I run out. So I'm partially exposed and um, I'm not all there. And so um, that very essence of not all there, I mean, I think that was some of my struggle with um, eventually some of the struggle with the cancer is, you know, this is about time, you know, is it the end of my time? Is it um, what's going to happen to me? Um, and so the imagery was really, um, a, 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 for the next six months, I, I did a lot of these images after I was diagnosed. And then in the wintertime, I, I was doing these all about time for me. It became, what is time? You know, well, you does photography this one here, freeze this one time? here is an interesting Yeah, this one here. It actually has yeah, the exactly. clock in it. And it's yeah. actually, it's, <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, I don't know how people can, how they can make it up, but you're in three different places in this photo. Yeah. Yeah. I ran into each of these spots. This is about a two minute exposure. And, um, I, I started and I would ran to the first spot, which is way in the back. And I stayed there for 10 or 15 seconds. And then I ran over to the next spot and I wanted to be like thinking about life. And then I was so exhausted. I ran to the next spot, which is the foreground, the, the first chair and my head's I'm leaning against my head. And I'm exhausted. And, um, you know, again, it was, I think, just for me, it was uh, such a powerful tool, um, the photography. Um, you know, was time running out? Huh. Um, even though I never thought I was going to die. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to say that it's, you know, however, some part of me must have died. You know, and I, and I wonder if that as we keep renewing ourselves and we keep learning, is, are we letting go? Are we shedding skin? so to speak, you know, is that what we're doing all the time is, is learning to let go and renew. And so I think for me, this was a, a piece of my journey was about um, letting go. So and would the, you, would you say it's really the whole concept of time or what time means in relationship to us? How, how is that what you're, or was it how yeah, much kinda, time we have I, left? Or, I mean, give me an example of what you mean by um, how you, how you kind of manifest it. I constantly think about the concept of time. I, I'm not, I don't know if I can articulate it. Um, I just feel like what is time? It, you know, just does photography or our photos, are they glimpses of a moment in time? Um, and so with these images I was taken during the cancer, these, um, I wouldn't call them multiple images, that more just um, transparent me. I mean, it was a, there was a, there's a transparency that I'm really not all there, that I'm, um, and I sometimes wonder during the cancer, was that was that happening? It wasn't really me. I mean, it's hard to explain. I can't, I'm not articulating very well. I, I know that it was so critical for me to shoot photos during the time. Well, I mean, I think... They were great medicine. We've yeah. talked about this before and the fact that, you know, I said that even you can... I can be in a bad mood and go out with my camera and on a walk just for 10, 15 minutes or an hour and come back in a completely different mood. So it's yeah, really I mean, ironic how that happens and how it changes. I don't really know that I can articulate. Oh my what, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm, I'm not sure about how to articulate time, yeah. what it is and, you know, how our photograph, you know, because I know all of us who take photographs, when we look back at them, it's like it's a moment in time. That right. was history, you know. 4000th um, of a second. So <laughs> yeah, four thousandths of a sec. You are always good with that. <laughs> yes, one one thousandths of a sec. But mine were more like, uh, th let me see, yeah, two minutes. Yeah, you were adding extra time. It's a time yeah, machine. I was. I was. That was. That's pretty funny, Lee. <laughs> uh, really, that's. 
if anybody ever wants to try the technique, it's a blast. You need a, you need a. Do you have a, to put an ND filter talking, on there to be able to get that? Yeah, kind of I put a ten stop. I think, and sometimes a, uh -huh. a ten stop or a six stop F11. And that becomes like a one and a half minute exposure, and you yeah. run to a spot, hang out, and then run out. A lot of trial and Very error. Cool. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, know that's know the way we used to do it in the film days. You didn't, you didn't know what. Right. The, you, there was no back on the back of the camera. You could look at. You try it. Yeah. You bracket. Okay. Hey, I'll try this yeah. exposure. You try this one. And then, the nice yeah. thing about it was you'd get these one-off great images that you're yes. like you couldn't reproduce again. And that's kind of the cool part about it. And even the the, the work you're yeah. doing, you were doing here, was the same way. I mean, no two were the same. I'm sure. No, I think there's a um, one in the um, church. Yeah, here, let me you have that one. Yeah, bring that, up. Um, that one is, uh, where'd it go? Okay, here we go. I really like that piece. That was, um, I was up visiting my mom and dad up in Massachusetts, and there's this amazing uh, church, Trinity or Trinity Church, United Method, whatever, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and I remember being in there and thinking, oh, man, this would be a wonderful place to just sit and meditate and have that essence of uh, being part of it. In other words, I guess when, if I'm totally there, like if I, if, if I'm not transparent, you can see the lines running through me. This was uh -huh. when I had hair. I don't I was going to say, now. who is this guy? This guy's got <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was my, that was my long hair at Asian time. Um, <laughs> long hair to my shoulders. This was, it was pretty funny. And so, um, it, it's funny, like, I feel like by creating this image where it's a little bit transparent and the tiles running through me, I'm part of the image rather than like just looking up there. Like I'm in, I'm like part of the pew or I'm just, I don't know if I, I'm not explaining myself very well, but I it, think it, it makes just perfect feels sense like, to me. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I love it. I mean, it's, um, well, instead of just being present, you're part of the, you're part of the whole experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. That's I. you know, very, earlier when we were talking about the idea of, you know, taking a picture from the outside, looking at somebody versus being in their field and making an image of them. Yeah. You know, so that take versus make. And this is similar to what you're saying. Yeah. So this next one then is about is is a little hard to see, but it looks like you're in the snow. Are you sitting in that chair? Yeah, this was uh, yeah, this was uh, at our uh, yeah, this is self portrait. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually, I'm good. You can't see it because I'm nude. Uh, I don't have any clothes on and there, there's two pictures of me. One is there's, it's very hard because it's not, this is a shot of a shot, the picture of a picture. Um, oh, okay. I'm in the trees also. You can, there's like, you can almost see my foot. If you, I'm looking, I'm sort of sitting in a chair Right. I see. and I'm part. looking over at my, and I've become part of the trees also. It's very hard. It's the lighter tree. Um, okay. that also is, uh, and again, this was, you know, we come into the world with, I don't know, just bare and just pure and just the essence of, I don't know, just nothing has been put on us. No, nobody has told us how we're going to be when we first born. We're just, we're just raw, pure magic being light and I don't know. I mean, you know, that's one thing I love, about, love about kids is kids yeah. will yes. take these non sequiturs. They don't know things don't go together and they'll put up, they'll come yeah. up with words or terms like, oh, that's brilliant. They'll take two concepts yes. that don't go to, and like, oh, I love that. And it's because yeah. what you're saying, they come into the world, they don't know, they don't, you know, and I think it's almost, right. it's almost, it kind of goes back to what we were saying before. We have to train ourselves to get out, as I said, get out of the way. And you called it, um, I forgot the term you used to get, you know, about getting, learning to let go, learning to let go, letting go, letting go. and kind of yeah. not be, you know, there's a, there's a phrase in the Bible called about talking about being in the world, but not of the world. And mm. that's the term. Mm. And so I, you look at it that way, you're kind of in the world. Okay. But you're not of the world. And that's kind mm. of the, the, the way I describe it. Uh, as well and uh, it's the same kind of thing where you're just you're present but you're not absorbed by what's going on around you so anyway hmm. um, so I've got a couple more you want to look uh, there's a couple more let's sure. look at this other one here um, 
which is um, this is a panel of three photos. Yeah, I don't this know was if they came out. Hard to Here, see. Let me, yeah, let me go. Is, I think it's a yeah. go a little lower. Yeah. 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 Um, I was doing these three panels for. Yeah, there we go. Um, absolutely loved. I probably did three or four of these types of images in which there were like a what do they call it? A triptych, uh, a three panel. Whereas the one all the way to the left. So um, usually in, in photography and in art therapy and it, it, it just in looking at images, we read left to right, mostly. It's like past to the future. And so this was me. If you could see, I'm leaning against a post. I have a coat on and I'm talking to this chair. This is an empty chair. And then I move off of the post and still talking to an empty chair. And it's like a wanting to convey the essence of talking to myself, um, that things are going to be okay. Um, life is okay. Um, and then the last one is that there is a little bit more at peace. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the chair uh, and I called this the conversation and I, and I, I wish I had a few more of these cause I did a, like two or three of these at least in various areas. Uh, I did one at a warehouse, um, and again, this was all about going inside, inside myself, and and talking to myself, really. Um, and, and so, so I wanted so to you, convey that. So you use you use photography to do that. I mean, you use photography to articulate. Oh yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you were trying to say and what you were trying, or I, probably what you were feeling more than anything else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's articulating it well. It's just truly what was going on for me. Um, during all this time, during this aspect of my journey. Um, that was powerful. It was, um, I, like we've said, it is creating. I mean, when I, when I create, I feel the healthiest, no matter how my, I don't know if that, yeah. I mean, even though I had cancer and this and that, I was creating. Like you said, when you're not in a good mood and you go out and you shoot or, you know, with anybody that's watching this show, you know what it's like if you go out and you shoot and it's, it, you come back and you go, oh my God, yeah. you may not have got any great shots. And that's what's important to know that it doesn't really matter if you didn't get any good shots. You were out there shooting. Right. That's the process. Yeah. You know? that, and that's a great way um, to put it. And you talk about the process. Something that I talk a lot about to students is explaining to them, and I've learned this in my own career. I do client work to get paid so I can afford to do personal work. If you don't yeah, shoot, you yeah. have to shoot personal work. And I'm going to talk about stuff for your yes. family. I'm talking about stuff that really you just kind of come up with in a dream or something. It's, it's just really may not make any sense to you, but there's something going on there that you want to shoot. I mean, you know me. We've worked on a number of yes. projects together, <laughs> yeah. crazy ideas. And my whole, oh, I know. my whole, you know, I tend to come up with ideas that have humor and, and um, juxtaposition. Things that don't go yeah. together. I love that. I don't know why or something about that concept for me that I enjoy yeah. bringing those things together. And uh, so for me, that's what I, I, I seek those things out. And I encourage other people yeah. to do the same is to try and figure out what that is for you because that really helps to develop your style. Now, yes. <clears throat> I think that's an important thing we really haven't talked about is developing it. We could do a whole hour on that, but just developing your own style is not an easy thing to do and I, I the mistake i see some young photographers make is they they think oh i'm gonna buy a lut i love the lut i love this look or i love this preset right. and they'll throw a preset on it and they'll think that is quote unquote a style it's not yeah. it's just a filter <laughs> yeah. it's not a style <laughs> so anyway somebody else's style it's somebody, well that's um, my whole why create why take yeah. somebody else's create your own so anyway yeah. that's interesting yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, and so I have, we have awesome. one more here, I think. Let's yeah. see. Um, okay. Let's see where it is. Oh, here it is. It is um, this one right here. And is was this part of the same series that you did before? Yeah, this, this was, is? yeah, this was multiple image. You can see the, it might not come across on the screen, but I'm sitting on the train track. And then it, again, there's this conversation. There's a theme that runs through a lot of my work of, around um, the conversation, you know, you can see myself pleading with myself to come on. It's okay that everything is fine. Certainly sitting on a train track's not healthy. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so well, it's like it's, come it's, on it's, it's healthy until the train comes along and then it's, <laughs> yeah then it's over yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then you don't and have again, to worry about it <laughs> yeah then it's over <laughs> don't forget it can't, i'll have no more images like this <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny lee um again t on a technical aspect there's a wonderful s curve here those are good things to have you know those of you that are looking at images and trying to you know see what that's whole train that forms an S and S's are part of the journey. And it's, it, it, it almost, it, it reemphasizes the whole concept of this, the journey, you know, we're all on a journey. We're all on the train track of life and it's getting off that train because like the, the video said in the very beginning, once I got off the train track, everything changed. The train track is so familiar. Every, you can get on the train and you, you end up where you're going to go. And I don't know. It's if you once you get off the track, though, and once you get off the train, it's it's exciting. There, I, re, I remember this quote I used to share with people that until you're lost, that's when you start looking around. You could be mm -hmm. in the same forest over and over and over, but until all of a sudden you're lost. That's when you start looking around and going, wow, look at that. Hmm. And so that's that essence of, you know, let me get off the track. Let me look around. Let me stop for a moment. So let me play, let me play amateur art therapist for a second. I, I, <laughs> yeah, noticed, uh -oh. I noticed that there's a theme in your work and uh -oh, it has to do with train tracks. Oh my gosh. So what is, so yeah, I take, so that? then I assume what you're trying to say here is you see that rail as, as a, as a barrier to you. It's really something that, that holds you too, too tight. And you don't like that because you want to be able to go like this and you have no choice. It's, it's a freedom. <laughs> it's a freedom issue. It really takes away funny. your freedom. Is that, would you agree with that? <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. That's great insight. Nobody's ever shared that. That's really good. I mean, seriously, because yeah, I mean, you know where you're going if you're on the train, right? Yeah. You're going, you don't have a choice. You you're going to get, get you, yeah, right. you don't can't get, you can get off and on, but that's it. You have someone's yeah, already yeah, made yeah. that decision for you. And, yeah, and it sounds to me like th that being off the train track is something that's important to you because it gives you that freedom to make those decisions right. in your life. Yeah can look around now has anybody have any questions um, um yeah so let's see that's a good I, good point so we had a couple of uh let's see, a couple of comments let's see um not necessarily a question but um our buddy uh jeff really is enjoying this <laughs> nice nice conversation and awesome. um let's see um sue ann mentions that she says it's very introspection Integrated, in, integrated, in, in, integrated introspection. I like that. Well, I, she's I. a wordsmith. The woman is amazing. She is that's, a word. her, that's her. I, that's I. her superpower. So oh while yours gosh. and I are visual, I, I. visual, hers is words, and she comes up with stuff. Like I that. love it's it. Great. It is great. It's Integra a really good integrated, word. Integrated, integrated introspection. I love it. He's writing it down, Sue Ann. I know. No, hopefully you can recording this so I could like look again. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then oh, she has one more. Gosh. She says she loved she loved the thing we were talking about. You can hang the picture forever, and I think it's the one uh, maybe of the uh, of Austin. I'm not sure. So, anyway. Yeah, your favorite. I know that's yeah. uh, it is a good picture. It is. It, it has all story. the you know. Look, we it's a sh we look for those. I mean, those are happy accidents yes. in a way. Sometimes we kind of know what we're going for, but we don't really know exactly until we see either see it in the viewfinder if we're lucky. For me, a lot of times when I get back and I'll look at the images and then I'll realize, wow, this is this is better than I thought it was. And yeah. um, so um, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Again, it's kind of uh, fun stuff. It is fun stuff. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I... So any anything else have... you want to, um, you know, sure. leave us with here as far as. Um, you know, comments or things you think that people ought to, uh, that you could take away with? Um, let me see. Let me think, look at my notes for words a second. Words of wisdom here um, for our... there, Yeah, words of wisdom. Sure. Um, there's a, a, a concept I used to teach when I was um, uh, lecturing. I, I taught at the university and um, it's, it's kind of a parallel with photography and Zen. 
And there's a concept of the Zen archer, and uh, you know, an archery, like a Zen archer, somebody who shoots arrows. Okay. And um, you learn in, in order to understand and to hit the target, you learn technique over and over and over again until all of a sudden when you go to shoot, you forget all about technique and you just are there and the arrow all already left your hand and it's already part of the target. And it just is like this essence of, boom, I'm there. And so in photography, it's like, you got to study the technique and you got to study, understand your camera. Um, I used to tell people, try to shoot with your eyes closed. You know, what's mm -hmm. it like? Can you feel your camera with your eyes closed? Close your eyes and shoot. You know, same thing. Let go of all that technique like you have been, you know, sharing with people. Tell the story, you know, let go, tell the story. You know, Excellent. feel the emotion, you know, that's it. Just let it go. It's so it hard to do, too. That's the crazy thing. Yeah, about it. it seemed like it should be easy, but it's not. Well, it's easier for some yeah. people. I mean, you mentioned yeah. Sharon before. I think it's, I'm, I'm envious of her because I think she can fall into that right brain Zen thing so quickly. Yeah, um, yeah, she, she's and, good. And uh, and so, you know, I know we know people, other people like that as well. And it's uh, anyway, it's very, very cool. Thanks for having me. I've had a hey, blast. This I mean, you know, been the hardest part. Thank you. you know, Go ahead. You know what the hard part is? Looking down at the at <laughs> the the picture of you because I want to look at you, Man. but then I know I have to like. I'm sure like people like ah there I am now I'm looking at hey. you know people. Believe me. And now it's like know. oh. I'm not. It's you, like, uh oh. You, you got to have something better something to look at than me, man. You you know you really need to work oh, no. on your eyesight if that's a problem. You're, so you're I, awesome. I, 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 like you can take. Oh, so you. next time we print out a picture of me, cut a hole in it, and put it in for the camera. <laughs> yeah, put it up there. That's right. Yeah, right. That you want oh, there's to... Lee. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> you I'll put you on my camera. I like paste a little pit icon of you on my camera. That, that works. That's pretty funny. That works. That's funny. Hey, well, thank you again, for, James. Uh, thank you, man. Me... I really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, this, like I said, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I appreciate yeah. you being the very first person to uh, agree to oh, do it. I got. You know, I really enjoy, as you well know, and have a passion for teaching and sharing expertise yeah. with other people. And yet I don't know it all. I mean, I have a lot of experience, yeah. but I don't know it all. So I love bringing other experts in that can expand on that. And so I, I think you've kind of broken the ice uh, here. And, uh, and what I've something I've been planning on doing for over a year. And you kind of now now we've got it going. OK. No. Good. Yeah, let's get the ball. Keep it going. Yeah, that's you know, exactly it's like get right. that moment. The momentum is, yeah. you know, once you start, it just it will keep momentum going. But right. thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, whoever came and visited uh, tonight. And uh, we'll see you again. Thank you. Listen again, you guys, I appreciate you. Um, you joining us tonight. And if you want to I, I mention it again, just one last time. Don't forget that the uh, first Friday of the month is photo reviews be sure and submit your photos if you want some professional feedback on to help improve your photography and again share if you guys like what we're doing here it would be really great if you'd share with other people um and get other photographers involved the more the merrier and of course it helps everybody so anyway uh again thank you very much enjoyed it and uh okay keep shooting <laughs>